Welcome to Sam's Talk. Russell winds it, feeds it back across, Chuck in, scores! Brady Kachuk makes it 2 to nothing. All right, welcome back to Sense Talk. I am joined here with the new Sense prospect, Blake Montgomery, who was drafted this year by your Ottawa Sanders in the fourth round, 117th overall. Blake, it's been a lot of back and forth. I'm glad to finally have you on the show, my friend. Oh, How are you doing? Very- I'm good. You know, very glad to be here. And I uh, just want to say what's up to all the sickos out there. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. This guy knows. This guy knows. So you know what? On that note, tell the sickos, tell the Sens fans a little bit about yourself and your playing style. Yep. I'm a, I'd say I'm a big forward. I play with a lot of skill. And my I'd say my biggest attribute is how much speed I play with. I feel like I move very well for my size. And uh, I like to score goals. So I want, like to produce a lot and play an all-around game. So, hey, you know what? We like to hear goal scoring here. We uh, Look, I, I don't know about you. This might seem controversial, but in the game of hockey, goals are usually a good thing, right? So yeah. love to hear that. Love to hear that. Now, on that note, in the National Hockey League, who do you like to emulate your play after? Who do you kind of like, you know, think this is a guy that I can compare myself to? Yeah, uh, I'd say uh, Quentin Byfield. You know, he's a guy who stepped into the league, wasn't, you know, stepped into the role he's in now. He just had to work his way up. But, you know, to watch the changes he made and how much, like, he does with his size and skill, I feel like I can take a lot from his game and learn a lot from watching him. Yeah, I mean, he uses his body very, very well. I think that's a good comparison. Oh, oh, and, yeah. you know, obviously us, you know, here as Sens fans, Timmy Stu dropping a three, Byfield a two. Those two are always talked about. Um, what do you think? What do you think about those two? Who do you think's the best between those two? I know a few years ago that would have been a little too early to ask, but now I think you can ask the question and be careful. You're a sense prospect now. I'll be honest, just Stutzel. I mean, I think he's just way much more fun to watch. Like just what what he brings to the game and just the swag he has. You know, he's a hell of a player. Oh, for sure. And we get the opportunity to watch him on a nightly basis, and now you do too. And hey, you know what? Hopefully in a couple of years from now. You'll be playing with him, right? So that's the goal. And, uh, you know, like you said, he's so fun to watch. I mean, you know, I mean, let me let me ask you a question. I don't know. I I can't I can't relate. I've never been drafted by an NHL team or a team for the matter. Okay, I've never been drafted. But I would assume if I got drafted, I would be watching the highlights. Did you watch some Tim Stutzla highlights after? Oh, oh, uh, and I've been have like his uh, even the his draft year highlights. I've watched those so many times. Like it's just ridiculous. Like just filthy, huh? I mean, those hands are filthy. (laughs) It's crazy. I'm remembering uh, his DEL highlights. Unbelievable. Every single highlight, he's doing something ridiculous. Going through everyone. Unbelievable, eh? It's it's (laughs) unbelievable. You know, kind of on that note, by the way, has any of the Sens players reached out to you, prospects, Belleville players, Sens players? Has anyone really reached out to you after getting drafted? Um, I know personally uh, Cam O'Neill and uh, Stephen Holiday. So nice. they're from Maryland. So, uh, well, he's sure. well, live there. Yeah. <laughs> so they reached out to and uh, not known from the pro, but uh, Tim Stutzel did like my uh, <laughs> post from uh, Dev How about Kid, that? So. <laughs> yeah, he's already cool. looking for that chemistry for the future right <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's funny hey so how do you know those two oh uh, just well Stephen Holiday he grew up playing with my brother like for most of their youth wow. career so they've been they're like good very good friends so they've known each other for quite some time and you know I was just there so we just know known each other since then too and then Cam O'Neill like I we skate together in the summer so I don't really see him too much though since I come to Michigan so I'm not there long but just yeah, just in Maryland, it's a tight hockey community because it's not too big. So you kind of know everyone. Actually, I was about to ask that because before we uh, started this uh, interview, you were talking to me about, you know, the groups that you practice with and train with in, you know, the summer in Michigan right now. By the way, to everyone watching, he's a Ravens fan. He's a Tigers fan, not a Jays fan. We're going to have to change that. Um, <laughs> and in terms of the NFL, hey, that's all right. That's all right. We don't need you to be uh, – you got to be a Red Blacks fan, though. We we can, we right, can handle the, right. the, the Ravens. Less so the Tigers. We need to become a Jays fan. Okay. Um, but on that note, who do you train with in Michigan? Just talk to us about that because, um, you know, obviously that's an important part of your uh, career. Yeah. So for off ice, it's a group called Ethos. It's in uh, Plymouth. So the boy Dan, he runs it. You know, it's a two-hour session. So they put us through it. And 
that's that's all week. And then I'm on the ice with the group. It's called NAR Hockey, uh, Narado. He's the coach at Michigan. He owns it. He doesn't come out with us, so we don't see him much. But, you know, we got skills out there, Larky, skills coach for Seattle. So he's running us through the skates. It's just a bunch of junior and college guys in the group. So it's a it's pretty competitive. Nice. And I mean, once again, obviously, we've heard famous stories of guys like Marshawn and McKinnon. And now, by the way, Batherson's in that conversation, you know, in Hal and not Halifax, sorry, but in Nova Scotia and stuff, practicing with one another. It's always cool to see, you know, where players train in the summer and who they train with. Anyone notable out of that college or junior pool of players? Uh, Matthew Mania is in the group. Uh, Charlie Serrato, he's he's a good player. And then it's actually a lot of the NTDP, uh, like 07s oh. and 06s who come to skate with us too. So it's just a blend of players like that, just from USHL. We got OHL guys out there. Cool. So, yeah. Can't, awesome, I'm, hey. can't say I know all the names, but it's, like, it's good. <laughs> hey, hope, hopefully they don't see this interview until after the skates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, oh. Now, you know, we were kind of speaking about this earlier, just before we've begun um but you know you decided to not go to the national hockey league draft you decided to stay in bermuda at a bar and watch with your family talk to me about that you know decision to stay in bermuda instead of going to the draft in vegas and about that moment itself what a special moment that was no yeah so i mean it was we planned it mainly uh towards the second half of the season my mom she was like you know like do you want to go and then i talked to my agent about it he's like you don't have to and all that so, and it was my second year eligible, so I was just kind of looking at it as, you know, why not spend it with family instead of just, you know, a few of them. So, plan to go to Bermuda, and then, you know, good good showing showed up, and it was just awesome because it's a lot of people I don't get to see too often, especially if they get to be there for a moment like that. So, it was cool. Even got my uh, my Aunt Winnie out there. She's uh, about got out. 93 or something about that now. Yeah, so she even she made it out, so it was awesome. <laughs> So walk me through that moment you got drafted. Did you get a call? Did you see it on the NHL network? You know, it, what yeah, happened? I, yeah, so I was I was in Bermuda, so the service wasn't actually too good, like, on my phone. Oh, so, no. so, but the TV, like, with the draft, it was a little delayed, like, by, like, I'd say, like, maybe three minutes almost. So oh. I was sitting there next to my brother, and then I'm on my phone, and I, then I just get a ton of texts, and I'm just like, oh, oh okay. But I didn't want to open any because I didn't want to know who it was yet. So I just put my phone down. And I'm watching the next few picks go by. I think it was like Tampa or like Nashville or something, a few before. And I'm like, okay, no, okay, no. And then Ottawa comes up and I saw my name go. And then my brother, he's next to me, he just starts screaming and shaking me. And I'm just trying to process what's going on. Incredible. Yeah. And then, and then uh, like I'd say five minutes go by after I gave, gave everyone hugs and all that, I get a call. And then I, my service was still bad. So he was cutting in and out. So I, <laughs> I couldn't really hear him too well. So he said he would call me back with all the information. It was uh, Dan who called me, so he gave me the call. He was like, welcome to Ottawa. You know, are you able to make it to camp following day and, and whatnot? So just figured it all out once I got some service, but it was it was awesome. I was ecstatic. It was it was something. Was there, was there some partying going on that night? Tell us about that celebration. Uh, honestly, one after the I got picked, like me and my brother, like we just hanged around a little bit, and then we just – honestly, we went to the beach, actually, and sat, sat on the beach after, just calmed down. You know, I really, I was still, I'd say I didn't really process it until like a few hours after it was like, what, what is going on? So went to the beach for a little bit, swam a little bit. And then, yeah, so we had camp next day. So we took it easy. So just went home, went to sleep. It was just, it was a lot of thinking and just like, you know, just cause it's, it's a crazy feeling, you know, all the work you put in up to that point and to see it really just on a big stage like that. It's cool. You know, speaking about your brother, by the way, he was also an NHL draft pick. He's currently in the Carolina Hurricane system, drafted in 2021. Did your brother have any advice to you going into that draft? Yeah, main thing he he told me from his experience was just stay calm and just try not to ruin the moment by just freaking out. He's just, just be in the moment. It'll happen. And then just like, just be patient. And then, you know, sure enough, it did. But for at his draft party, it, took, it was during the COVID year. So we were just few family members yeah a few families in the room and took a while to get there but he did go so it was, it was just definitely a little bit no, more nerve-wracking for his case but it was still very awesome and then you know for dev camp wise he just told me go there just play my game he's like they're not looking anything more that it's more like a welcoming experience so just really just try not to do too much there and just get to meet everyone which i did and met a lot of good people there and then 
that was I'd say that was about it from him. Yeah, I mean, once again, we were talking about this before we began recording, but it's incredible. You and your brother, both pro hockey players, and your father, by the way, played at St. Mary's in NCAA. Hockey's yep. in the blood. No, that's incredible. <laughs> yep. It's and one thing, he'll, one thing he'll and Your always... mom's a doctor. I mean, what an incredible family. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yep. One thing my dad always say about his college experience, he'll always bring it up. I was a two-time All-American, and I'm in their Hockey Hall of Fame. So <laughs> Actually funny, that's in my notes. So thank you for taking my notes there, Blake. <laughs> he always bring it up. <laughs> Shout out to him, man. Shout oh, out yeah. to him. That's incredible. Shout out to and that's kind of funny. We'll talk about it later about your uh, Wisconsin commitment, but I might have to ask you about St. Mary's. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later, though. We'll save that okay. for later. Okay. Um, on the conversation at Dev Camp, though, what was your experience like? I know we had a lot of the recent draft picks, of course, there and some other invites and whatnot. Um, just walk us through that experience on the ice, off the ice. We were talking about the off the ice stuff before, you know, in Canada, not much going on there, but <laughs> talk to us about the whole experience. Uh, I, main thing I'd say is it was very, eye, it was very eye opening experience, you know, cause obviously you feel good getting drafted, but like, I feel like once you get to dev camp, you realize like it's really not just everything yet. Like there's still a lot of work to put in. So I feel like I learned a lot in that aspect, just seeing guys around me and like the older guys, like guys who played pro last season, seeing where they're at in their game and where their process is and how they view things. It was very good learning experience, but it was tough too. like the pace of the skates, you know, everyone's flying out there, passes are hard and everything just crisp. So I feel like I just took out just like a lot more work has to be put in and, you know, I'm ready to do it. Well, you know what? Good for you because you got, a lot of time left. So do not yeah. even worry about it, my friend. You got a couple of years minimum at college and then maybe some AHL time and then NHL. So you got a lot of time. But the most crucial thing about you, in my opinion, is you got the, you know, the speed with your skating. Uh, you got the frame. You have the NHL size and ability there already that projects to be a solid NHL player in the future, in my opinion. At six foot four as well as a winger, I mean, you already kind of spoke about it as a power type of guy. You know, obviously it's a bit of a, you know, awakening experience when you're going against some of those guys at dev camp that have especially played a lot of pro hockey overseas, for example. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So that's definitely a wake up call. But yeah. would you agree that your size, your skating ability, and of course, just your overall style of play kind of makes you feel a little more comfortable with that competition? Oh, hundred percent. That, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So it, that, like it, obviously the, like it still feels like heavier and everything and whatnot, but it, I definitely did feel like I belonged out there, no doubt. Good. And you do, of course. I mean, oh, yeah. after 117th overall, you know, they're <laughs> not going to just let me strap up some skates and go out there. You know what I mean? Like, so. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, on that note, though, last thing I'll ask, we were kind of speaking about it. I always, whenever I talk to Sens prospects or Sens players, I always ask them, you know, I know you didn't go to downtown. You only had a few days there. So no sweat. Next time you're back in Ottawa, you will have to go. Um, but talk to us about your off the ice experience, even though limited, what did you guys do there, uh, off the ice? I know you went to a couple of restaurants and stuff. Just kind of talk yeah. to us about that. Yeah. So, uh, we mainly didn't, we went to Fertelli's, I think the first night, me and a few other guys, Ananovsky, Lucas, Javon, and, uh, Finn, uh, he was, uh, what's his name? Wahlberg, Wahlberg. He was there. So uh, it was just us. We were eating dinner, you know. It was very good. It was we are all we just got the per diem, so we, we were just eating up. Get? What did I get? Oh, it was I, I literally I asked the I like I don't remember what it was called because I asked the waiter. I was like, "What would you get? Like, what's like the best?" And she just she just wrote something down. She was like, "I got you." So, it tastes good. But, oh, it was unreal. It, it was, came out steam, and it was everything you would want in a pasta. Oh man, you know what, uh, JG Pajot? No. You don't know J.G. Pajot? Oh. oh, my friend, my friend. <laughs> oh, you got some learning to do, my friend. <laughs> J.G. Pajot is probably one of the most legendary Sens players of all time, not because he was one of the best. He was so clutch. In the playoffs yeah. in 2013 against the Habs, got a hattie, got the crowd oh. chanting, like, you know how Hab fans the, or soccer fans chant ole, ole, ole? Yep, yep. We did Pajot, 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 Pajot. <laughs> so he's famous for that. 2017. Why, I'm going to route it back into form. Just give me a second here. Yep. I'm going to bring the story back. In 2017, he scored four goals in the second round against the Rangers, including a double OT, GWG. By the way, you want to see the CTC at his best? Watch that game and those highlights after this. 
I, I, I will. promise you, I will. Incredible. I mean, the barn probably almost broke that night. He ate two chicken parm before the game. So before <laughs> your first Sens game, you better have a chicken parm, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I will remember that. I really will. <laughs> like I said, I was telling you before, we got some incredible stories and characters yeah. in the city. That's for sure. <laughs> now, the last thing I want to talk about with Dev Camp is, you know, especially with prospects, like besides the few minute highlight clips that we can see or tapes, I should say, that we can see on YouTube and whatnot, that doesn't tell the whole story of a player. Once in a while for the top 90 players, you'll see, you know, scouting, YouTube channels put out like shifts and stuff from individual games. Um, in fact, you have some clips like that and a few other players from this draft have as well. So I did get to look at your game like that, but you know, there's some other players that, you know, Ottawa drafted this year alone that we don't really have a lot of tape on or really any idea on. So who stood out to you at camp who surprised you and um, who really like once again stood out to you as like, wow, this is a player. Yeah. Um, I mainly, he was actually my roommate too. So Yak and McChuck, like I, I actually didn't wait, see him. Wait, your though. roommate's Yak? Yep. <laughs> he okay. was. I'll let you finish and then we got to talk about that. <laughs> so, uh, uh, like, honestly, like I didn't see him the whole like week, honestly, cause the first gate, I, you know, you're just kind of like a little nervous out there. So like, I wasn't really looking at anyone. I was just kind of like, just staying calm, but, uh, I didn't see him until the three on three. So we ended up, I played him the first game and then I was like, oh shit. I was like, he is the first round pick forgot about that <laughs> he is very good especially for his size and how he moves and then, like how much skill he brings he's a he's a very good player yeah so what popped off about him right away to you like obviously you can see one thing from your eyes while watching on a screen but being on the ice is something completely different what really stood out to you i mainly his confidence like like I feel like nobody was really at first trying to do anything. And then like, he, he like first like shifts, he just came up with like a span around and tried to put it through someone's legs. And I was just like, Oh, okay. <laughs> so he's just like not afraid to really try anything. And it works out most of the time for him. So that's good. Well, and off should... ice, is he a cool guy? I mean, obviously oh, yeah. in room, oh, yeah. cool guy, clean guy, by the way, or is he yep. like that roommate that leaves stuff everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he's he's the sleep early. He's just vibing. He's just running his mouth too, chirping a bit. You know, he he, did, he didn't have much good things to say about Maryland. <laughs> so, oh, so you guys were going back and forth, eh? Give us a little uh, insight on that. What were the chirps yeah. like? <laughs> Man, he's just like like who's from Maryland and all that. I'm just like whatever, like Calgary. Yeah, okay. <laughs> typical typical Canadian American beef right there. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, That's but cool he, though, eh? he did hook me up though for when uh, he he gave me some Canadian or American cash instead of Canadian since they did give us Canadian for the per diem. So that was sweet. Yeah, I don't know what he was thinking because uh, that's a pretty good deal for you, not for him. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. I've seen the conversion rate. Jeez, I don't think he has. <laughs> but also, he's the first round pick, so I don't think he cares. Yeah, it'll be all right. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's funny. Um, so by the way, just a question. How was that decided? Like, did you guys pick or was it picked for you or? Oh, it's, it's just random. Like I showed up, my flight got in pretty late. So I, I just walked up and then she gave me a room key. It actually didn't even say who my roommate was yet. So I just opened oh. the door and then he woke up. I was like, it was dark. So he woke up, it was pretty late. And I was just like, sup? And he was like, sup? I was like, I'm, I'm Blake. <laughs> He's like, I'm Carter. <laughs> and I was like, I'll tell you, yeah, I'll talk to you in the morning. <laughs> Y'all are playing Russian roulette with, uh, with uh, hotel rooms, eh? So you never yeah. know who's going to be in there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Now, speaking, obviously, of kind of on that note, did you get to meet Steve Stowes and the coaches oh, yeah. and whatnot? What was yeah, that? I, like? I, I made a thing to try and meet like, everyone there. So I'm pretty sure I did, but you never know because there's a lot of people. But no, everyone definitely personally met. You had at least a decent conversation with everyone. And then for the jersey presentation, actually, I talked to uh, Boyd and uh, Steve O's, so, or Steve. So they had good stuff to say, welcoming and all that. So, and it's awesome how they treat the whole staff, top to top to bottom. Like even the guys who were uh, driving us around, they got hooked up with shoes and clothes and all that. So they definitely treated everyone very well. Best in class. Get used to that. Yeah. Best oh, in yeah. class, right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so just on that note, once again, just with Dev Camp and just with the Sens organization as a whole, before I kind of talk to you about your commitment to Wisconsin and all that fun stuff, um, what are your impressions overall with the organization after getting a bit of a taste and getting to meet everyone and looking at the history a bit? What's your overall impression? 
I think it's a very good culture, for, especially for a new staff to come in and set the tone like that. I'd say it's very well laid out, very organized. They're on top of everything and they take care of. Clearly, they're not afraid to, you know, spend on their guys and take care of everything. You had everything you needed and more while you were there. So and you can definitely feel that like there's some brew in there and they really want it bad. So I thought you can just see that when just from being there. We're itching. Man, when I tell you, we're itching. <laughs> let me tell you something, all right? I do game recaps after every single Sens game. I've been doing it for over a decade now. The last time the Sens were in a playoff game and I did a video for that, I was like a sophomore in high school. High school. <laughs> I've graduated university, my friend, and college. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> it's crazy. It's coming. I, 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 it's coming. I, we need I, to bring it home. See, it's coming, yeah. We need to bring it home. Now, before I talk about Wisconsin, actually, I just realized I glossed over this. 58 games last year in the USHL, 22 goals, 43 points with the Lincoln Stars. What was that, what was that experience like in the USHL? We were kind of talking about it before we got recording where, you know, you guys played a very physical, tough style of hockey. Uh, but overall in the USHL, what was your experience there? And, of course, with the Lincoln Stars. Uh, it was very good experience. You know, it was, it was my first year junior, so I – I'd say like you you feel like you have an idea what to expect going in, but I feel like it's a lot different once you really step into it. So I I stepped in like it was very I honestly I didn't come out the gates too hard. Like if I was, say I was feeling out the league, it was I feel like I was rough and stuff. I feel like I had way less time and whatnot. It was just new for me. And then I feel like I got hurt around a uh, November concussion. And I was watching some games, and that was actually the best thing for me last year. I just was up in the stands watching the play and it just slowed everything down for me and realized what I could do. So I came back, had a good week, and then I feel like I just carried it out through the rest of the year. But uh, it's a very – it's a long year. It's a lot of games and can be crammed at times, so it can be very taxing on the body. But uh, it's very – it's it's good. It's a tough league, but it's good. I won't lie to you. That's the first, like you said with yourself before with something, that's the first I've ever heard a concussion actually being a positive. So, <laughs> hey, shout out to you. I mean, yeah. that's yeah. Hey, that worked out for you. And I mean, again, good season last year in the USHL. And we're going to get into some stats here brought to you by uh, Sense Talk statistician Trent Reynard. Uh, I was showing you these stats before we begun. And you were shocked with a couple of them. So we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> but, um, you know, obviously any top league is tough to play in. Um, and of course with the USHL, I kind of want you to talk to us about this because you mentioned to me how the West was a little more physical and defensive orientated, less open while the Eastern conference was more open and offensive minded. Why do you think that is? Um, honestly, I'm not too sure. It could just be the type of players that go there that has been like bred through just like from like, you know, past seasons and where they want to go maybe. But it was just kind of how it went because, like, I feel like every time we played an East team, it would be a way higher score game for us. And then we'd go back to the West. It'd be a tight game other than, like, maybe playing Fargo because they were good. <laughs> but other than that, yeah, I'm I'm not too sure. Maybe just the style of just, like, from their conference and just – I don't know. What do you think – I always ask this question. What do you think is the best aspect of, like, you know, being a young player – in the development leagues with a bunch of other players and literally the same exact boat. Do you enjoy those long bus rides? Do you enjoy, like, what's, what are those moments that like always stick out to you and are things that are you going to remember for years and years and years to come? Oh, absolutely. The bus rides can be the funniest part at times. You know, that's just when you get tight with the group because every USHL season, your first weekend with your team after training camp, it'll be in Pittsburgh fall classic. So for us, that's a, like a 16 hour bus ride. So we're on the bus for a while and, I feel like that's when the group just clicks instantly. You know, you just kind of know what to expect for the rest of the year and how guys are and all that. But uh, one thing my coach, Rocky Russo, said all year is like, you know, soak it all up because it's going to be over before you know it. And, you know, start of the year, you know, you, you don't think much of it. But, like, I feel like towards the middle, you're like, oh, wow, it's going by pretty quick, you know. And then, like, towards the, when, it's, when it's over, it's like, oh, wow, you know, it, it really does fly by. So like the connections you make are special and the time you spend and uh, the bus rides just practices and just being in the locker room it was it's awesome any notable pranks or stories that you can tell us that stick out to you <laughs> um <laughs> oh, <laughs> we have uh our ceilings in our locker room are pretty pretty high up they're like above the stall like decently we had a player shout out jared bang and he uh 
grabbed a teammate for Kodich's gear and he tied it all up there, like full gear, like helmet, shoulder pads, pants, skates. Like he got it all in there. And just, it was just hanging in the middle of the locker room. <laughs> How did he try to take it down? It probably looked like you setting a pinata or something. <laughs> he, I actually don't know. I didn't believe it because like he didn't notice. He kept walking by it. <laughs> so sure. Any he pranks to you, know. by the way? Were you ever the victim, or are you the pranker or the prankster? Which like I, I would just sit back and watch it and just enjoy it. <laughs> okay, so a quiet bystander. Okay, yeah. I, so you I, never. I, so you weren't the ones doing the pranks, eh? No, no. Okay. I just I would just That's laugh good. at it. That's good to know. <laughs> It's good to be in the middle there. You don't want to be, you don't yeah. want to be the one with your stuff in the ceiling. I don't want to be on no bad sides. <laughs> Speaking of hazing and stuff, let's move on to the NCAA and Wisconsin. <laughs> you know, I don't know what's going to go on there. I'm sure we'll have more stories next time we have you on. Only good stories, of course. Oh, yeah. um, but, you know, obviously, congratulations. On top of getting drafted, you're going to one of the best programs and schools in you know the United States of America in the NCAA with Wisconsin, the Badgers. Um, what what went into your decision to go to Wisconsin? And by the way, you know, why didn't you go to St. Mary's where your dad, uh, you know, Hall of Famer, uh, went to? Uh, mainly because they're not a D1 program. So uh <laughs> but you know, obviously would have loved to carry the legacy there, but I was actually committed to uh Maine uh before the start of the season. So uh I committed there end of the season, my prep school season. And, you know, time went on and you know, being obviously being at Lincoln, we're on a college campus, you know, pr pretty big one, like I'd say, but just kind of like just realize, you know, not too big of an academic school, like kind of like secluded almost. And I just, you know, I didn't really want to do that again because I played two seasons in that area and I realized I'd rather go somewhere else for college. And then so I decommitted. I talked to my coach. He asked me where I wanted to go, and I told him Big Ten, and then I put Wisconsin. You know, they were obviously one of the first schools I wrote it down. And then they were the first school to reach out. So, But one thing they told me was that they wanted to be the last visit. So I went on. Why? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. It's a, I guess it's a trade secret. <laughs> but uh, I went on a visit to Notre Dame. Great, great school, great campus. And then I was supposed to visit Ohio State and then Penn State. The but I did, you mean yeah, <laughs> and I, I realized that I just wanted to jump to the Wisconsin visit, you know, ask them if that was a problem. You know, I can't guarantee anything, but I do want to visit next. And they were cool with it. So and Todd Kanati went through my whole uh recruitment process for the most part. And then so I went on a visit and then my uncle went there, by the way. That's his uh, alma alma mater. He there you go. was on the 90, oh, that. <laughs> 94 Rose Bowl team. Yep. Oh, he wow. won yep. <laughs> He did oh. win a Rose Bowl there. So I he Incredible. I was on the phone with him like an hour before my visit. He was just telling me everything, everything and everything about his college experience. And he just absolutely loved it. And none but good things to say. And then one of my visit and realized it was everything and what he said more. So it was it was just I I feel like I knew pretty quickly once I got there. With the advice that you could share with us, what's some of that biggest advice for the college experience in Wisconsin? Other than the fact I've never been to Wisconsin. I can only imagine you probably have to be a big fan of cheese. Uh, I hear they like cheese over there. So, you know, I'm a big cheese guy. I hope you are too. <laughs> uh, it's like, a, it's really like Wisconsin. It's almost like a city. Like the campus itself is almost like a city. So it's just, there's like a downtown and it just goes on and on. And, you know, there's tons of people. So it's just, it's up to really what you want to make it. I feel like it's just, yeah. And in terms but, of the advice again, like, what did your uncle say that you really should Oh, like? okay. No, no, my bad. Hey, I'm a big cheese guy. I had to ask that question. If you know me, you're watching this, you know I'm a big cheese guy. Probably a little too much. Um, but, you know, what did your uncle say in terms of advice and stuff for Wisconsin? You know, obviously, it was a bit ago, but things don't change as well. Yeah, the main thing he said is make relationships with, you know, with the teachers and the academic people you're going to meet and who's going to be helping you in that because he said it's going to be tough to manage that with, obviously, playing sports there and that. And then mainly just, oh, he said it gets very cold there. So he said, you better lay up in the winter. So we'll be, I'm used to that though. It'll be normal. But, and then he told me about a few, food, few uh, food spots. So I did hit up one of those with Todd actually. So that was, that was cool. And then he, he said, uh, honestly, he said, stay away from uh, this one street. I forgot what, but <laughs> I was like, that won't be a problem. I think. <laughs> Shout out but, to the uncle. Uh, yeah. I'm watching out for you, you know? <laughs> yeah. <Good> advice. 
<laughs> it was a while ago. It's tough to remember everything. Well, that's cool. I mean, that's that's incredible. I mean, again, just having a brother that's also drafted at the National Hockey League is rare. To have your father play NCAA hockey and your uncle, like, that, wow. Yeah, what a family. Actually, what I a think family. he played about two seasons with the Eagles, I believe, and then I wow. think he got hurt. What so was his he, name, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, Mark Montgomery. Shout out Mark Montgomery. <laughs> what position did he play? Fullback. Oh, he's, so. he's big. He, he's oh, big yeah, guy. He, he's a big guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. No uh, Luden, uh, vice president of Sense Talk. His family uh, is from Philly, so he's gonna be a big okay. fan of that one. Shout out uh, to you, Noah. Yeah. Um, now we're gonna get to the Trent Reynard uh, stat stump here. Shout out to Trent Reynard, the Sense Talk statistician. Look, on two separate occasions last year in the USHL, you got eight shots in the game, and only twice, by the way, on that you know theme of twice, you didn't register a shot. So every single game except twice in the USHL last year, you got at least a shot. Twice, you got eight. Are you a shooter or are you a playmaker? Kind of describe your style of play in that regard. I feel like uh, going into the season, I thought I was more of a playmaker, but I had a big, I'd say I had a good summer of getting stronger and more explosive last summer. So I did get a, a lot faster. And then that my it was actually the first game of the, one of the first games of the years I had the eight shot game. And you won't believe this, I, I missed like, four or five breakaways it was it was ridiculous so yeah, I like it, it was just I feel like it was just because I was just shocked I kept getting these chances I didn't realize I like had to do more after it but you know it just kept like I just my I kept skating you know I, I get around pretty quick and I did like the space just keeps opening up so I just kind of formed into more of a shooter and take real stepping into that role but I feel like next season for me the biggest thing is scoring more on a lot of those shots and I, I feel like it'll happen but you know, in I those just, two eight, and I don't have the stat here, unfortunately. In those two eight shot games, did you at least pot one? Yep, yep. I would I, imagine, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> one of them, one <laughs> of them I had two. Yeah. Pardon me, say it again. <laughs> one of them I had two. There you go. Have you ever got a hat trick? No, 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 no. I, chef had, I, had, a, I had about five or six two goal games last year. Never couldn't get the third. Wisconsin, if you're watching this, be on the lookout for a hattie. A lot of cheese heads are going to be fine on the ice for that. Bring up the cheese again. <laughs> the next thing I wanted to mention to you, and you kind of kind of spoke to me about this as well. Um, just to everyone, I'm mentioning again, we had a 15 minute conversation before this. So, um, you know, you had an interesting reaction to this one where the Lincoln stars had a negative 47 goal differential uh, after the regular season. But you had the best, and once again, I want to preface by saying I don't read into plus minus too much, but when it's a stat like this, that's so glaringly obvious that there's something unique about this player, you have to mention it. Minus 47 goal differential for the team, Blake, you had a plus eight. You led the team. There was only two other players in the plus category, and they were at plus one. So you led the way by a long shot. So, you know, what specifically makes you such a strong defensive player? I know you're a two-way guy. You can play well in both, you know, zones, but clearly – you're pretty good in your own zone. What makes that the case? Uh, I Obviously, I have a lot of size, pretty lanky, and I'm quick. So I feel like, you know, I scan my area well. I feel like I'm not out of position too much. But I feel like it's mainly I've, I'm very good at watch, like knowing how the puck's going to develop. I don't want to say like cheat it because I wouldn't call it that. But I feel like at times I can read when maybe we're, like we're going to get possession before they have it. And then I start going. And then a lot of times for my team, it would just be a simple chip out or just a pass out. Cause like I'll be drawing the guy back. So I feel like with just how much I'm moving and knowing when to go, it just creates more space and like guys out of position for the offensive zone. And most times are not like, like we'd be in the ozone for my shift. So it was just kind of, I feel like it just kind of worked out. <laughs> but that, at well, one point, shots I, too. <laughs> yeah. At one point I was in the season, I was, plus 15 so it did end up going down but it was just yeah <laughs> don't be telling us that don't be telling us that um you know on that note by the way you know i just forgot to mention this um you know with wisconsin what are you studying by the way i have to ask i mean you know obviously i'm not too sure yet I, oh, okay what are you I, thinking I, of because uh, everyone says you know business and you know some that but i don't know if i want to do something like a little more harder or because or like maybe just go with something simple because like I don't really know because I know I'm going to end up graduating but I don't know how like soon I'll be leaving college or whatnot so I don't know like what I want on my plate for while I'm there but it's going to be short I don't want to just like cram it all in so you know, palms business one yeah. of those probably are 
your yeah. basic not not nothing's easy in university yeah, obviously, obviously but, but one of your just, more basic instead yeah. of like a specific field where you got to read all these books and stuff i get that i could i can yeah. only imagine and kind of on that note how do you balance that work life to student life to hockey life and you know just your life in general you're balancing all these different things you got you know you got your career you got school you got friends you have your own time how do you balance all that especially as a young athlete um I'll, I'll be honest i feel like i don't know i feel like i just have to make it work it's just it's like you obviously you got your schedule you know when you're skating you know when you gotta do this or whatnot i feel like it's all about just maybe working around it and making sure you know people you're close with understand that because i feel like at times people don't understand how like exhausting or taxing it may be you know it's it's tough you know it can be mentally draining you'll just be tired and whatnot and sometimes you don't want to talk but I don't yeah I feel like I'm not the best guy to ask for that because sometimes I'll just go ghost <laughs> now you kind of mentioned before how at dev camp um you know the drivers and stuff were getting gear on that note what gear did you get and did you get it right away like was it shipped to you or oh, did you just that, wait yeah. like how did that go how does it how does that work the first day you step into CTC, like right in our little player stalls, there's shoes, polo, pullover, hoodie, workout clothes, backpack too. You know, they gave you gave you a lot. So it was it was sweet. I actually got my uh jersey right here. Ooh. <laughs> that's looking fire. And that's the new uh fanatics one. It's looking clean. Flip oh, it around yeah, again. Let's yeah. see your name on the back there. <laughs> Atta B, that's fire. That's sick. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Very it's cool. Going up very cool. Sure. But, no, they hooked us up for sure. That's incredible. I was literally – thank you for showing that. I was going to ask, did they let you take the jerseys home? There's <laughs> yep. your answer. Yep. <laughs> There's your answer. So, on that note, you know, with the jersey and stuff, you know, when you go to Wisconsin, when you kind of get into the flow of things there and start training with Wisconsin and put on that new big W on your chest – I actually got one more year in Lincoln. so. Oh, okay. So you're going back to USHL yep. and then yep. NCAA. So okay. fall, fall 25, but uh, like right after season ends, like you'll get like a month before you got to actually go to Wisconsin, like middle of the summer. And they got a six or eight week program. So you'll just be there skating, working out, taking classes. So get a real feel for it while there's no one there and all that. And then, yeah, you'll come back home for like probably not too long and then jump right back into it. Are you looking forward to that? I mean, going back oh, to Lincoln, yeah. I know you guys made the playoffs, didn't go too far, unfortunately, just I think got bounced out of the first round. Um, do you have second. do you really want a second round? Yeah, yep, that second that round. Back check there the, by Blake. Shout out to you. Dig it to the second. <laughs> <laughs> so no, don't apologize at all. So <laughs> obviously going to next year, the expectations are higher. What oh, do you yeah. think about your group? And more so for you, what do you expect out of yourself as well? I, I main, main thing for me is I want to step more into a bigger leadership role. And, you know, I feel like everything will come around that. I feel like I can say, I, I know I'm going to produce more. I know I'm going to be more, you know, effective and more consistent, but uh, we got, we got a good group coming back. We have like 12, 13 guys coming back. So a lot of vets coming back and, you know, we'll build around it, but very high expectations. Like we we're, we are expecting to go far next season. Now, a couple of final questions here as we wrap up. I know it's almost 7 o'clock. You just came back from a long skate. can only imagine you probably want to eat, uh, hit the showers, and go to bed. So <laughs> we'll wrap it up soon. What do you got planned for the rest of the summer? Obviously, we spoke about all your hockey, on and off the ice, your experiences, the draft, everything. You spoke to me before about, you know, we went to a Tigers game and whatnot. But what do you really got planned for the summer? You got some vacations. You got stuff like that. What do you got going on? um nothing too crazy i'm headed back to maryland sunday i'll be running a camp with my brother we're running a little camp like a bunch of kids are coming out so we'll be doing that next week and then i am going up north it's kind of like a little safe haven i'd say in michigan you know you go to a little cottage and you know go on the boat and all that so i'll be doing that maybe a few times but uh other than that you know i'll just be training and working throughout the week and then just hanging out with the buds probably so not none like vacation or a... no traveling, which is kind of nice because I feel like I do travel a lot in the heat of the summer. So it's kind of nice to just stay in one spot. Are you a cottage type of guy? Like, do you like being in the city or do you like being like in the, the forest and the cottage country? Uh, I'd say more kind of nature side. I, I feel like I like like it more calm. So that, that's more my my speed. 
Ottawa is the place for you. You can drive 15 <laughs> minutes in any direction and you're in forest. You're in the book. Yep. Okay. I'll, yeah, I'll tell you that much. Idea, so yep. This is the city for you. But Blake, this has been so much fun. Thanks again for joining. And, uh, you know, obviously, you know, you kind of gave your message to the sickos and stuff. But, you know, if there's any Sens fans still watching this and whatnot, um, what's your final message to them going into the next USHL season? And then, of course, NCAA and beyond. Uh, I feel like if you keep up with me, you know, I feel like I'm going to have a big year next season, step into the NCAA and just keep getting better. So I feel like you'll see me before you know it. Beautiful. And on that note, we'll have to have you on again soon. Obviously, we'll stay in touch. And, oh, yeah. uh, of course, Absolutely. the best of luck in the USHL next year with Lincoln again. Bring it home, my friend. And then, of course, in Wisconsin, make sure they eat some cheese there for me. And, oh, yeah. Uh, do a good job over there. Okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's been a pleasure.